five of the Holistic Holiday at Home Culinary Experience. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is the fifth of the cooking demos. We have a wonderful, wonderful chef today. She's written many cookbooks. Her food is delicious, it's familiar, it's flavorful, and I know you're gonna love her and you're gonna love her food. She's gonna be making burrito, samosa burritos, not burrito samosas. So combining two foods from two different cultures sounds like a great idea. Please welcome Kim Campbell. Hi, Kim. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here tonight. How are you, AJ? I'm good. I'm so happy to see you back in the kitchen because you're just a natural. Thank you. It's, it's the first time I've taught for the holistic cruise. I'll say cruise without rocking, right? <laughs> Everything's stable tonight. <laughs> that so. is funny when you're trying to do a cooking demo and it's going like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's great about so. the, the, the at home experience guaranteed. No seasickness. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, tonight, you want me to tell you what we're going to be doing Absolutely. real quickly? Sure, go ahead. So tonight we're making samosa burritos. Um, and it's, it's basically, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to fill three different uh, wraps with it because I'm going to give people different options. And we're making um, the filling, which is a potato and cauliflower based filling, which is wonderful. You can eat it all by yourself. And then we're gonna make a chutney sauce cause, because in India they use chutney sauces. They're kind of savory. Sometimes they're sweet, sometimes they're creamy. Um, but I'm gonna do a creamy uh, yogurt-based, plant-based yogurt chutney, which will be a lot of fun. Um, so these are my ingredients. I'm just gonna kind of move them out of the way a little bit. Um, I try to keep everything in the center because that's where people see things the best. Um, I'm gonna heat up my pan. We're going to start by sauteing onions and peppers. I almost always saute an onion when I get started because it's, it's a way of building flavor. Are people going to be asking questions? Yes, uh, so far they haven't. They're just saying samosa burritos. Yes, says Reeves. Gotcha. And uh, but they're, as they're logging on, I believe they will be asking questions. Okay, good. I like that. Um, so we're going to get the pan really good and hot because when it gets hot, and you put your onion in, it begins to caramelize immediately. So um, I always have something next to the stove to saute with. So I use water. I use tonight I'm using vegetable broth just because I had it, but I, I usually use water. If I'm making a marinara, I might use a red wine, um, but you can really dry saute with anything. We're using a lot of spices because in India, they use a lot of spices. Um, they use a lot of sp spice blends. So before I, while I'm waiting for this to heat up, I want to tell you that a samosa, if you go to an Indian restaurant, it's, they take a dough, it's a, it's a pastry dough, and it's got white flour and butter and a little bit of salt and water, like a pie dough. And then they roll it out and then they fill it and then they deep fry it. And sometimes they fill it with potatoes and cheese. Sometimes they put beef in it or chicken and then they deep fry it. So I guess the lesson is if you're plant-based and you're whole food plant-based, don't order a samosa at a restaurant because that's what you're going to get. But tonight we're going to make a really fun, clean, whole food plant-based version. So I think my pan's getting there. So we'll go ahead and put the red onion. I always use red onion for this recipe. I love red onions. They're sweeter. They're a little more expensive, but I just really like to use them. And then I'm using a poblano pepper. See, you can hear it sizzling. Then you know your pan's ready when it sizzles. That's a and beautiful pan. Isn't it nice? These are my La Crusette pans. I have two. I was gifted one in my pod. I fell in love with it. And so we had a La Crusette outlet here in our, our town in Mebane. So I went out and splurged and bought myself one. And I love this pan. I use it all the time. It's a five quart. It's enamel coated cast iron. Wonderful. Um, it gets a little bit funky on the bottom, but it cleans up really well. So peppers, let's talk about peppers real quick because people get, I was confused about peppers for a long time and I was kind of afraid to use hot peppers, but I'm using a poblano pepper, which looks like this. A jalapeno pepper looks like this. It's a little bit smaller. And a serrano pepper looks like this. And in my house, these are the three that I always use. 
I know there's a million other peppers, um, but typically the smaller they get, the spicier they get. If you, um, if you take the seeds and the ribs out, it's not spicy at all. And so if you're not into spice, I would recommend that you um, do that. I can eat a jalapeno now if I take the ribs out and I take the seeds out and I never used to be able to do that. And we love to stuff them. So what you wanna do is you wanna get this onion to sort of get translucent and a little bit brown because you're caramelizing it. And you can see, you can lift, lift all those really nice um, caramelization off the pan. You know, I think having really good tools in your kitchen is so important when you're plant-based. And it's funny because people always tell me, oh, I, I don't cook, I never cook. And then they go plant-based, start to feel better. Um, and then they get really invested in the kitchen tools. And then they go to Ruby and they take cooking classes and they become pros. So I always feel like once you realize how healthy the food is and how much you can benefit from it, then people want to connect and start cooking their own food. I don't know about you, but I've never cooked so much in my whole life in the last five months because we haven't gone out at all. So, all right. Who just that. wants to know, Kim, if this recipe is in one of your books? It is not. This recipe, um, I developed it about a year ago and I've been tweaking it, but it is not in the book but it's on the Plant Fear Nation website. So it should be, it should be go along with this show. Um, but if you go to Plant Fear Nation and you look up Samosa Burritos, you should find it in there. All right, so I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit. And now I'm gonna start adding my spices. And I don't know, some people like to cook along with me. So I'll go slow and I'll make sure I have all of the ingredients. So I have a jalapeno. Ah. The recipe says jalapeno, I use the poblano. I don't think it really matters. Um, and then we're gonna add garlic. And I always add garlic after you saute your onions because garlic burns, burns really fast. And when it burns, it gets bitter. And it will literally ruin the entire dish if it gets bitter. So I always, sometimes I just add, it's the last thing I add. And you know, a lot of people don't like to use fresh, fresh garlic. I would recommend this. I would recommend that you chop up a lot. You can buy the bags that are pre-peeled and just chop it all up and put it in a, in a little jar and then you'll have it, which you'll use it more often instead of using garlic powder. All right, so then we're gonna go to the ginger puree and I cheated big time. I actually used this. Um, you can get it in the produce section of your grocery store. I always wanna show people what their options are because it's just super easy and I use, use a lot of ginger. You can also just buy the root and you can brush it on your microplane, which my microplane is in my bag. If you freeze it, it's really easy to um, brush on your microplane, microplane and mince, so all the better. But I'm not gonna use fresh, I just wanted to show it to you tonight. We're gonna use the ginger paste. And then after the ginger paste, we're gonna use cumin powder I'll have a royal mess when I get done here. And cumin powder. We're going to use, I believe it calls for half a teaspoon. You could use a little bit more, but I'm not a cumin fan. So I, I really struggle with cumin powder, but you could go up to a teaspoon if you want. For me, it's just really bitter. Half a teaspoon of coriander. Coriander and cilantro both come from the same plant. Um, but they taste very different. So coriander versus cilantro. Coriander comes from the seed, same plant, different flavor. And then, um, oh, gram masala. You know what? Oh, I do have it. I was gonna say, I left that at home. One teaspoon of gram masala. That's a half a teaspoon, so I had another one. Gram masala is a blend of spices. It's one of those really nice Indian blends and it's very fragrant, very strong. So if you are not into it, start out with a quarter of a teaspoon and keep adding a little bit more because a lot of people who don't like Indian food, I've discovered that it's the gram masala because it's an interesting blend. 
And then toasted fennel seeds, I toasted them up. And the way you toast up a fennel seed is you get your pan really hot, a dry pan, and put your fennel seed in and just let it toast. Taste it before and taste it after. When you toast something, it tastes so much nicer. It's kind of like a piece of bread. Once you toast the bread, it tastes very different than when it's untoasted. So, all right, um, turmeric. We're gonna go with a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. This is gonna give it that really nice bright color. And again, with turmeric, you don't wanna overdo it because if you overdo it, you're gonna get a really bitter flavor. And then lemon juice. And I always like to use fresh. So I'll cut it in half. Lemon juice helps to, I think, brighten the flavors, you know, kind of like sea salt, it brightens the flavors, but lemon juice and citrus if you're using it you don't need to use as much salt all right so about a tablespoon and i'm probably using more than a tablespoon but that's okay and so then i think we have everything in there i'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in there or not you don't have to if you're not using salt and i think we're ready to go so we've got this really nice blend of onions and peppers and a little bit of garlic and all of our spices. And the spices kind of come out the longer they sit. You know what's fun about Indian food is it tastes better the next day because it's been sitting. So what I did is I did this ahead of time because I wanted to make sure that we were able to get through all of these recipes. Is I cooked the potato and I cooked the cauliflower together. I think it was two cups of cauliflower and two cups of potatoes. I put a little bit more in because there's a lot of people in this room right now who love samosas. So we're going to make a big batch tonight. So put your burritos in here, put your potatoes in the pan. You can use any kind of potato. I believe these are just um, Idaho potatoes. You could use, you could even use sweet potatoes. Why not? I've never tried it with sweet potatoes. I like white potatoes with this recipe. And then I think we're going to add some peas. So I have about a cup of peas here. And this is almost a meal, just like this. You see how positively easy that was. It is a really simple recipe. So a lot of times I never get to the filling part. We'll just eat it like this with a chutney sauce. We're gonna make this beautiful chutney sauce. And I think if you're, if you're really trying to, to make your dishes just pop, use sauces, make salsas, make cheese sauces, make um, you know curry sauces, because it just makes a, a big difference. And that I believe is done. And Karen wants to know what is the size of your La Crusette pan? It's a five quart. It's a big pan and I, um, I just leave it on the stove all the time. I don't take it off. It cleans beautifully, doesn't it, Nelson? Nelson always washes the dishes in our house. He didn't used to, the kids did the dishes. <laughs> now that's a good husband. That's a good husband, that's right. All right, I'm gonna put that there. And if, if you can't really view, view the rolling, let me know. Um, so I have my steamer going on because there's different ways you can roll this. Um, hey, I'll just turn that one off. Turn this one on. Some people, you know, they don't want to. They don't want to eat bread. So I have an option of using collard wraps. So look at these collard wraps. Aren't they huge? They're like fans, <laughs> but they're beautiful. So we're going to steam a collard wrap and we're going to stuff a collard wrap and roll it up. And I'll show you how you can do that. Then the other thing we're going to do is. We're gonna use um, tortillas. I drove all the way to Chapel Hill this morning to get Ezekiel tortillas because those are the cleanest. Tor and tortillas are, they're not terribly clean. There's a lot of, sometimes they use a lot of salt. They put oils in them. And depending on what brand you get, I actually, the brand that I finally found, still has a little bit of oil in it, is Elvarado. Um, it's, it's still pretty minimal, but of all the tortillas out there, this one was the best. The cleaner they are, the more they crack when you roll them, but I'll show you a trick with that too. 
So then the third thing we're going to wrap them in, and this is just total, total fun. We're going to use um, vegan egg roll wrappers. And these are really fun. And these are probably going to give it the closest um, feeling to a real samosa because it's, it's dough based. And we use these sometimes for fun if we're doing appetizers or we're having a party. And they, there's no oil in them. But I think the downfall is that they are made with white flour. So. Anyways, so the thing with the um, tortillas, we're going to start with that first because they're warm. Is you got to have something to keep it. Um, is this in the way? Can you see? Put it over here. You have to have something that keeps the tortilla warm and moist. So you can get one of these or you can get one of these, which is a, it's, it's like a little pocket. I think I got it at the kitchen store. And so I took my tortillas and I wrapped them up in a wet paper towel, a damp paper, a damp cloth, not a paper towel. And you'll find that these are so soft and they typically break, but look, see how soft they are? They're beautiful. So cover that up. And samosas are typically in triangles, so I can show you how to do a triangle, but I think it's just easier to roll it up. Yeah. Uh, Tammy wants to know how long does the La Crusette pans last? I only had mine for, it's a good question, I've only had mine for probably six months, but they're supposed to last a lifetime. They do get some scratches on them if you're not careful. Um, I always make sure I use a silicone or a wood spoon. All right, so then I'm gonna roll it up really tightly and place it on a parchment lined baking sheet. And I ran out of parchment paper, so I, I have this double sided paper. Put it on that and then we'll do, uh, we'll do another one. We have a nice okay. comment from Annie, she said, I, Kim, I loved your demo on the Holistic Holiday at Sea. We make your breakfast burritos frequently. I love every recipe from your Plant Pure Nation cookbook. I just wish I had gone to your book signing session. Oh, thank you. All right, so if you wanted to do a triangle, let's see if I can do a triangle. I think you would go, to make it look like a burrito, you can go like this. I'll do it over here. Yeah, we're moving it so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Go like that and then fold it over and then put it seam side down. So it's more like a, a triangle. I like it this way though. So then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to use one of these and they're real paper thin and we're gonna cut it. I think I'm gonna cut it in half. Let's see if it works. Um, actually, no, we're not gonna cut it in half. The thing is, you do, it doesn't have to be in the triangle shape. Um, you can try if you want. We're gonna put it in here just like that. I'm just gonna roll it up. I don't need to get fancy. I've locked her set pan for 15 years. 15 years, wow, that's good to know. So mine's gonna last a good long time. And Susan wanted to know what is the size of the tortillas you're using? Are those eight inch or 10 inch? These are, I think they're, they're the biggest ones. So what, they're 10 inch, 12 inch? It doesn't say. They're the biggest, I mean, they're, pre they're pretty big. Monster. So this is what you got. And then we're gonna put it in the oven and we're gonna bake them and they get really crispy. They're not gonna get super golden brown on the top, like if you put oil on them, because you don't want to put oil on them. So we'll do that. And then the next thing I want to show you is the collared wrap. I'm kind of watching the time too, because I have a tendency to like to talk and I don't want to go over our time. Um, so I have a steamer, a steamer basket. Just tell me, what do you want me to do? <laughs> They're 
telling me what to do. Because <laughs> sometimes I block the view. Okay, let's do that. All right, so what you want to do is get a really nice pair of, of tongs and you can see that. Ah. Um, and you want to hang on to the collard. And you really don't have to keep it in there very long. You're just going to wilt it. So we'll put it in there. We can go ahead and put a couple of them in. And if you can see, I actually cut the rib out because you don't want to go all the way. You don't want to go all the way up to the top. You kind of want to stop halfway because you've got to have a base to roll it on. So we'll go ahead and put the second one in there. And then we'll put the third one in there. Wow. The top we on. And while that top's on, I'm going to keep on building. Charles says, your Plant Peer Nation cookbook is the best. It's our most used cookbook, and it shows we give it as a gift to anyone interested in eating whole food plant-based. Oh, that's great. Giving a gift of health, right? Yeah. Well, a lot of my recipes, um, I developed, a lot of people ask me, how do you develop recipes? And I was telling people this last night, because we do a live show here every Thursday night. I love to take old traditional recipes from magazines, you know, those little magazines you get at the grocery store, they're like, I don't know, three bucks. And there's all kinds of recipes in them. I have tons of those. So a lot of the recipes I do have just been um, adapted from mainstream recipes, because that's what people are used to. And that's what they're going to eat. If you just sort of pull out the chicken and pull out the cheese, you can fool them with other things. So, all right. Someone uh, watching has had their La Crusette since 1972. Wow. All right. Well, then it sounds like I have a pan for a lifetime. So I'm going to take another one of these. They're really warm. And put some more filling on it. Roll it up. Tuck in your sides. And I think these are probably ready. They, 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 it happens really fast. So I'm going to move this over here. Pull this one out. Listen to this. Jan, who is watching live, says, I used to be a La Crusette store manager, and I've had about 30 different pots, pans of theirs. I've had most well over 35 years. They'll last a lifetime if you cook in them correctly. No high heat on the stove. So, you, you know, your pan might outlive you. <laughs> it's probably going to outlive me for sure. <laughs> I have another one that a, a pod member gave me, and she just said she didn't cook very much and didn't use it. So I, that's how I became um, sort of addicted to, to La Crusette. All right, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna put your filling right here. I probably overfilled it. I have a tendency to do that. Um, and then you have these ends. What do you do with them? Just take them and wrap them right over. That's why you need to get the great big monster collards and then fold it over. And I love, I love putting all kinds of things in a collard quinoa last night we made aztec quinoa on the show and they, they would be beautiful in this all right put that in there there no bread no flour no nothing all right another one i usually do the shiny side on the outside so let's go ahead and put another scoop in here i think i'm gonna only do one more of these because I'm not sure that the guys here who are eating this tonight want their collard wraps. I think they might like the burrito wraps a little bit more in there. And the thing about the filling is you really can adapt it, adjust it. You can put vegetables. That's the thing about being plant-based. You can make so many substitutions. You just have to find what works for you. Okay. There it goes. And if you cut them, they're even prettier. You see that? Potato holds it together. That's what I'm having tonight. Oops. Amazing. 
turn that off. Just one more. The sauce is truly what makes this recipe, which I'm excited. I have a couple of things. I want to show you how I make yogurt because um, the yogurt is in the sauce. You can buy plant-based yogurts now. Um, thanks to Miyoko Shinner, she's kind of the queen of all things yogurt. And I learned from her. I have her books. Um, I absolutely love her recipes. So we're going to fold this over like that. And those are nice appetizers too, because you can cut them in small bites and then people can, you can put them on a really pretty tray if we have company, if we ever have company again, I don't know. <laughs> so, and, and these, I found these at, um, in the produce section of a mainstream grocery store, Walmart carries them, a lot of places carry them. They actually have little ones. And next week on Plant Pure Kitchen Live, um, which is free by the way, you can come in every Thursday night and cook along with us, but we're gonna be making steamed dumplings and we're gonna be using these. So that is it. I'm gonna leave these for later. And we are gonna make a yogurt based chutney. Kim, have you ever tried the jicama tortillas? No, somebody was telling me about them. God, I love are them. They I'm obsessed. I get them at Trader Joe's. They've always had them at Whole Foods, but they were always so expensive. And at Trader Joe's, they're a lot more affordable. And they're so good. They're, they're the size of a corn tortilla. So I guess it's six inches and you can, you, you don't heat them. You eat them raw and you, anywhere you would use a tortilla. They're so good. I heard that. Somebody was telling me now when you roll them up though, do they break and crack? Well, they don't, you have, it can be only taco. You can't really roll them like, like you've been okay, doing. Okay. So you just, oh. yeah, put them in them and I see. Yeah, kind of raw. I'll have to try those. I, I really like them. And it's a great way to get people to eat more vegetables. So no. healthy home cooking who's watching live says her husband doesn't love uh, like onions. Do you know a substitute for me? I've never known a substitute for onion. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess you, I would say maybe leeks, but that's the onion family. So I think if you're allergic or sensitive to onions, you might be with leeks as well. So I'm not really sure. Um, but that's, I, I have talked to a couple people who can't have onions. That's a tough one. Um, so tough. let's talk about yogurt because this, this recipe starts with one cup of yogurt. I'm probably going to add a little bit more, but I want to talk to you about yogurt because you can buy yogurt at most um, more, more specialty stores. I got ours at our food co-op. They have it at Whole Foods. I'm sure they have it at Wegmans, but Kite Hill carries a Greek style yogurt. And it's, I'll put it under here, it's very thick. And if, I'm sure if you strained it, it would get even thicker. So I make my own yogurt. I bought this to show you, um, but I make my own yogurt and I strain it. I do what Miyoko Shinner told, told me to do in her cookbook. And I strain it and look how thick it is. It's almost like a cream cheese. And Nelson and I love to have this on. Like last night, we had it on top of our quinoa. It was really nice. I flavor it. I put different seasonings in it. So the, the easiest way to make plant-based yogurt, and I wish it was done. It's not quite done because I started it last night. But I take, I take wet soy milk, one full quart, and I take a vegan probiotic, four of them. You can use three. It would probably still work. And then I open up the capsules. You can put them right inside the container or you can put them in your mason jar. Mix it up really well. And I start with a room temperature milk because you don't want to start with cold milk. That's it. That's all I do. I actually just discovered this. I just discovered that you can make tabletop yogurt. I always thought you had to put it in the instant pot and you know leave it overnight, but you don't. You just put it in your mason jar after you stir your um, probiotic in it, or you can use another yogurt. You can use like a quarter to a half a cup of yogurt that has a live culture, put it in there, mix it up, and it will turn into yogurt within, depends on the temperature of your house. If your temperature's lower, it'll take probably a couple days, but mine's not done yet. You keep in mind, it's still not quite done, but you can see it's starting to thick, thicken. It's not there yet. And plant-based yogurt is a little bit more watery. That will get thicker. I'm going to leave it in there for a whole nother day. And then I take it out and I put it in a strainer with coffee filters. You can use a cheesecloth and I let it strain. 
and I make this. So we always have yogurt going in our house. This is it. It's all you do with yogurt. Um, live viewers asking for the name of the probiotic. Um, mine is PB8. I usually get an Acidophilus sulgaris, sol, sol, um, but you really can get, you can use any, I've used a variety of them. So I'm sitting here gabbing and I forgot to put the samosas in the oven. So I wanna go ahead and do that. So we're gonna put them in the oven. I had it, have it set for 400 <laughs> and we're gonna cook them for, I don't know, 10 to 12 minutes. So, hey Nelson, remind me so I don't burn them because I have a tendency to do that if I don't have a timer going. We'll put it in there and the oven is off. So I don't know. We had turned the oven on um, earlier, but I don't know if it'll be done, but that's okay. We can still taste them. So we're gonna start with a cup of yogurt. Um, and I'm gonna kind of eyeball it. I might use a little bit, little bit more. The, the longer you culture yogurt, the tangier it gets and the tanginess is what what makes it taste like dairy. The other thing you can do with yogurt is you can take frozen um, grapes or mangoes or anything that's in your freezer, put your yogurt in here and blend it and you'll get a really nice ice cream. And then we're gonna add mint. So a quarter cup of mint and I probably put a little bit more in there. And then we have cilantro, a half a cup of cilantro. And before you put your nose up at the cilantro because we have somebody in our house that doesn't like cilantro, but when you mix it with the mint and the ginger, it makes all the difference in the world. So then we're gonna add a jalapeno. So I, I thought I would show you how I do a jalapeno real quick. You could put it in just like that, but it's gonna be really hot. But you take a spoon and just, and you could use gloves too, because sometimes if you're putting your contacts in or you touch your face, which I do all the time, um, it, it'll burn. So you, you want to take the rib right out, scrape it right out. It's not really the seeds that's spicy, it's the ribs. And now you can stuff them. You can stuff them, you can put them on the grill. You can just eat them on salads. I promise you they're not hot. So then we're gonna add um, to that two teaspoons of uh, fresh ginger. Like I said, I, I used the ginger from the squirt bottle. And then some garlic, two garlic cloves, a little bit of salt or not, if you're not using salt. And then lime juice, we're adding a tablespoon of lime juice. I usually use fresh, but I didn't have a fresh lime with me. And then we're gonna add two teaspoons of maple syrup. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just eyeball it here. If you didn't wanna use maple syrup and you wanna use more of a whole food, you could use a date. That would work nicely. Um, Cynthia would like to know, does the taste of the collard overpower the filling? I don't think so. I don't. Um, but when you put the sauce on it, you you'll love it no matter what the no matter what the wrap is. But I don't think so. Um, Nelson, did you think that, that the collard wrap overpowered the filling? It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong, he said. But we like we like collard. Yeah. And All right, I'm going to turn this on. Okay, sure. I'll ask you the question when you're done. It's not plugged in. All kinds of things going on tonight. Yep. So Francie Sue says it's 55 here and right, I cannot pronounce, I, I skipped fourth grade. I didn't have geography, right? Well, I'm not gonna even try, it's Iceland. It's 120 here today, guys. Oh and, my goodness. Yeah, so I'm indoors. Kim, they're asking what the cookbook is on the stand behind you. Is that the Plant Pure Nation cookbook? So this is, um, the Plant Pure Nation cookbook. This was the first cookbook that I developed um, when we were doing jump starts. Actually, Nelson was in Kentucky filming with these guys who are filming for me right now. And I stayed home and wrote the cookbook because we had so many people that had great results 
and they all wanted recipes. So I put them all on paper and came up with this. And then I had so many more that I didn't put on paper. So I did another one. Um, so that's where Plant Pure Kitchen comes from. So there's probably 250 recipes. And people ask me, which one do you use more? And is there a theme on one? I use both of them equally. My sister loves this one. Um, I, you know, a lot of people don't know about this one. I, I guess it got hidden somewhere, but it's a great book too. Yeah, I didn't either, honestly, until I had you on my show the last time. I don't know how I missed it. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened there, but all right. So my Vitamix is not this. Ah, I see. Can you make the yogurt with almond milk? No, you cannot. So when I first started making um, yogurt, I had so many failures. I said, I give up. I, I give up. I tried it with almond milk. I tried it with cashew milk. I didn't want to use a lot of coconut milk. Um, so I, I just explored. And the only one I had success with was soy milk. And I only use this brand because it's just soybeans and water. But I know that there are some people, I know Miyoko Shinner uses soy and cashews together. So if, if you're really curious, I would get her book. And I had it here the other day. AJ, do you remember what the title of her book is? I think it's called uh, Artisan uh, Cheese. Artisan Vegan Cheese. Yeah, that's a really good book. I mean, anything you want to know about cheese making and fermentation and culturing, she's just the master. All right, I think it works now. It doesn't. Uh-oh. It's going to work. Houston, we lost power. It's going to work. <laughs> there we go. Guys, I am 131 subscribers away from 100,000 on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it because it would be fun tomorrow to ring the bell. I always think of that song, ring my bell. Actually, you can't sing on YouTube. When you have music, then they do something and they send you a letter. So, well, you can, but then something happens. Oh, Julie, Julie like the hickam wraps. I love them too. So when I'm eating my daily salad, I'll just put the salad in them. Or if I'm eating like rice and broccoli, I'll put that in them. I, I just like them so many, so much more than tortillas because tor poor tortillas are like, they're like 60 bucks and 60 bucks. They're 60 calories and you can eat like 20 of them. Thank goodness they're not 60 bucks. But the, uh, the hickam ones, you can eat like eight and it's no big deal. They're like eight calories each. So you can have eight Hickama tortillas for the same calories as one corn tortilla. And I like eating more to weigh less. I'm going to have, I'm going to try those AJ. I'm, I'm curious now. I like them. I, you know, I mean, they're probably not for everybody, but they're, my husband really likes them and he, he eats corn tortillas too, but they're, they're very fresh and they're slightly crunchy and yeah. Wow. Is, is the chutney recipe in your book? Oh Dang. my gosh, that is so good. I'm sorry, you guys. That is that is just amazing. <laughs> um, the chutney is in the recipe with the um, samosa burritos, so it's in it's embedded in that recipe, and it's not in either book. I've been posting the link to it, so if you guys scroll up, I've posted it several times. That is, do not leave out the mint. Do not leave out the cilantro. Make sure you put the ginger in it. It's just amazing. So um, that's. And we're gonna go ahead and taste this. And I'll tell you if it overpowers it. I love eating in front of all of you guys. Just put a little bit on here. So I have a lot of sauces in my cookbook because I am married to someone who loves sauces and he's always saying, put a sauce in it, add more sauce to it. Um, and I, I'm starting to realize that it's really, it makes, it makes a huge difference on your actual dish. Um, nope, I don't think the collard overpowers it, but I mean, I think it's a personal preference. So, um, so I think I'm gonna bring Nelson in here in a minute, but I wanna tell everybody that we do those Thursday night shows and they're live. And the intention was that you would cook along with me. Um, and, and, and join us to get together. And we give recipes every Friday. If you sign up, um, you get the recipe. Something smells like it's, hang on, let me check my oven real quick. Nope. We actually burned something on the show, but, but you know what? That's the reality, right? When you're in your, in your kitchen and things are on. And oh, we lost sound for a moment. Kim? If you can hear me or see me, 
I cannot hear you. Or maybe you guys. Is she frozen for you guys as well? It happens. But anyways, if you sign up on Friday. Kim, can you talk? Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. You just froze for just a moment. You said if you sign up on Friday. Okay. If you sign up, if you sign up every Friday, you get the recipe for next Thursday. So you can grocery shop, get your ingredients. You can prep. You can cook along. We have a really fun group that um, joins and they, they chat in the chat box and I learn from them and they learn from me. And it's just a really nice thing since we're all, you know, stuck at home these days. Um, but that's every Thursday. And Nelson has some exciting things going on too. So I wanted him to come in at the end and taste what I've made, make some comments and then tell you a little bit about all things plant pure. So where are you? Are you done? I'm done. Yeah. Hi, AJ. Hi, Nelson. How you doing? Pretty good. I was sitting in the back watching on the Zoom, uh, the Zoom window. So I've already seen you. Oh, good. Um, but yeah, so Kim wanted me to come up and just say a few words uh, about uh, some things that we're getting ready to do that are kind of exciting. And I've mentioned some of this before on the holistic cruise, but it's uh, kind of all coming together. So um, as many of you may know, uh, after we released our film, Plant Pure Nation, we launched a network of groups around the country called Pods. Uh, they are currently supported by our nonprofit Plant Pure Communities. And they involve about uh, 250,000 people or so at this point. And um, pods get together and they do social things and provide support to one another, you know, living a plant-based lifestyle. But we very quickly started getting feedback from our pods that they wanted to become more activist in their local communities to, to conduct outreach to help spread the message. So for the past three years, we've been programming a website to help make that possible. And it's taken us a lot longer than we ever thought it would, but uh, we've been persistent and we now are almost ready to release this. And it's a website that uh, will provide some basic social networking functionality to pods and other local groups who are doing things in their community. And it also will provide access to projects so define strategies and resources. And in addition to that, we're gonna be streaming media through the platform. And that's a very important part of this because we're gonna be highlighting stories of people who are doing inspiring things. And we're gonna be looking for people who are doing inspiring things that are related to the projects on our platform. So the idea is to give people tools to take action and then to use media to inspire them to take those actions. Um, one of the key uh, things that we're gonna do on the media side is we have a show that we're gonna be launching here soon, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks, and it's gonna be called Open Tribe News. And we already have uh, done four shows, we've taped four shows, so we'll be a few ahead uh, but this is going to be a very exciting show. And uh, what I'd like to, to do is to encourage all of you, if, if any of that sounds interesting, to go to the website and sign up. And the website is at opentribe.com. Uh, the only thing I would caution you about is that we haven't uh, launched it yet. So it's still in beta testing. We're still adding resources and other content to the site. So you can check it out if you want, uh, but just know that over the next couple of weeks that we're gonna be adding a lot to it. But uh, I'd encourage you to go ahead and sign up at opentribe.com. I just posted a link, yes. so if people wanna click it, they can sign up. Yeah, that's don't, right. Don't go anywhere. I think you might wanna taste these. Oh, yeah, these are. this is a really good dish here. The sauce is amazing. Sauce is what makes it. Yes. Yeah, Kim said I like sauces. I do like sauces. Yes. So I like so, flavor. I wish the egg rolls were done more, but I guess the oven was not preheating. And you can grab one of those. 
and give it a taste. Yeah, I knew he was going to grab those. <laughs> so, Nelson, I was watching the Holistic Holiday at Home, the Q&As today, and I was watching the one with your dad. And mm -hmm. the question was, what does he eat in a day? And he had a really great answer. And I'm wondering if yours was similar. His answer was, whatever, whatever Karen makes me. <laughs> what I would say, though, <laughs> is that I do a lot more work in the kitchen than my dad does. Well, that's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, I do all the dishes and all the cleanup. But yes, I pretty much eat what Kim makes because she's so good at what she does that if I tried to to do that in place of her, it would be a whole lot, whole lot worse. So I I'd rather eat her food. Actually, he's a really he's a pretty good cook. Yeah, mm. he is. So you like that? It's a little it's bit hot, good. isn't it? It's yeah. it's. You guys, it's this sauce. It's just an amazing sauce. So, um, all right. See ya. I know we're pro we're probably 15 minutes shy of seven o'clock, and I think that's about when we're supposed to um, close up, wrap up here. But you know, certainly we can talk food for a little bit if people have questions, and um, you know, we could do that, or we, we could we could end our session right now and whatever. You. You guys, if I see some questions for Kim, we'll keep going. But the recipe looked amazing. It didn't look that complicated. And I love that there were so many varieties. It's like you could eat it in a tortilla. You could eat it in a rice paper. You could eat it in a collard wrap. You could eat it without any of it. You could eat it by itself. And it didn't seem that difficult to prepare. Yeah. And I think if, if people are really um, being careful with things like gluten and bread, and flour, I think this is a really a, a nice option to wrap things up in collard wraps. You can put hummus in it with some sprouts and you know you can can really do anything. I was at Whole Foods today and it's really pretty amazing how many different kinds of wraps. They have a cauliflower wrap. I don't know if you're familiar with that AJ. I I don't know. I think you'd need to steam it. I think it was a combination of cauliflower and maybe corn. I can't remember what it was, but they have all kinds of wraps um, to choose from. So someone's yeah. asking if you could show the different wraps again. Hey, show it. Yeah, cut it in half. Yeah. Okay, so these these normally I would cook them until they're really crispy, but since we, you know, since I pulled them out of the oven, we're on a time. You can you see? And then these things are so fun. I love to put um I, I do a stir fry and I put stir fry in them and I make egg rolls. These are pretty. Question, what else could you use the sauce for? Oh my gosh, you could use this sauce for a salad dressing. You could put it, you could put it on your potatoes. You could put it, you just have to taste it. Um, I, I think you could use it anyway. To me, it's a, it's a sort, of, sort of a salad dressing. Um, I think you could put it on anything or it could be a dip. And again, you know, it's not, it's not dairy based. So you're using all, all the yogurt is made of is just soy milk. So there's not any oil or fat in it. And then these, these actually crisp up really nicely too. Cut this in half. Brian's really good at getting all the, the beautiful shots just like that. So question on what is the strength of the probiotic you used? I, uh, my glasses on here. You're going to make me read big words. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has, it's a blend. And so it's got, um, lactobacillus, acidophilus, um, bifidobacterium, lactus, uh, salvarius. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of them in here, but it's, it, it is vegan. Pretty sure it's vegan, but make sure when you get your probiotic that you get one that, that is vegan because a lot of them are not. But again, you don't even have to get a probiotic. You could start, you could just use a, a live active yogurt culture like Kite Hill and just put a quarter to a half a cup in and then it grows. And then you can take that base and you can make more yogurt with it. So you don't really need to get the, the um, probiotics. I ordered my probiotics online. That one, I think I got at a grocery store, but so Solgaris, I think, lacked uh, acidophilus. You go to Amazon, you can find it there too. I also have an Amazon store, which I know you do too, AJ. Um, so all the things that I love and that I use in my shows, 
um, cookbooks that I love, and they're not just my cookbooks, other people's cookbooks. If you go to Plant Pure Chef Amazon store, um, you can see all the things that, that I really enjoy. So Great. I'll see if I can find that link and post. I've been posting all the links that everything you guys talk about. Jill, the sauce recipe is the same place as the samosa burrito recipe. Yeah. And I, I've, I've posted it several times. So sometimes guys, all you have to do is scroll up and then you can see it. Yeah. So capture it again. Just give me a second. Everything. Let's see if there's any more questions. Uh, but so I'm, I'm going to go back to the yogurt while you're looking for questions, AJ. You, you can take the yogurt and you can put it in the blender like what I just did. You don't have to freeze it, but you could add frozen fruit to it and it will taste just like frozen yogurt. Um, and, and you can use grapes because grapes are very sweet or mangoes or berries or anything like that. Oh, and that will kind of... Excuse me, Karen has a good question. How long will a sauce last in the refrigerator? And can you substitute parsley for the cilantro? Melanie wants to know. I think you could sub substitute the parsley because what I'm, I'm really getting is a lot of the mint. So I think you definitely could do that. And I think you could use this for up to seven days. It's going to separate a little bit when you, you know, if you let it sit there for a couple days, you just need to give it a stir. It's fine. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a fermented product. So it's, it's kind of like sauerkraut. It's probably just going to get a little bit more tangier with time. After about a week, I would probably toss it, but it, right. it won't last a week in your refrigerator. So Uli Julie says that your Aztec quinoa is one of her top 15 recipes. So I asked her to list the other 14 if she didn't mind. And she wanted to know, could you freeze the wraps before baking them? Um, for this recipe? I guess for any recipe, maybe. Sure. I, I think you could do that. Yeah. And Myra wants to know if you could put them in the air fryer. Yes. I did an air fryer class in Chapel Hill. And we actually made um, egg rolls with using the, the wraps that I, I was showing you. And we put them right in the air fryer and they were so good. They were really, really crispy. And next week we're gonna do Asian dumplings and you can actually take Asian dumplings and put them in the air fryer. You could put the tortilla ones in the air fryer too, it'd get really crispy. So it's amazing what you can put in that air fryer. <laughs> just about anything. Whenever I have something that I don't know what to do with or that it's about to go bad, I just put it in the air fryer and it magically becomes delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, used to, I used to be sort of an anti-air fryer because I have a convection oven, so I use my convection oven a lot. But now it's just Nelson and I, we use that air fryer quite a bit. So much so that I'm putting on my Christmas list, I'm putting the Breville on because I really like the air fryer. <laughs> You'll love it, I promise, and you'll never go back to anything else. Healthy Home Cooking wants to know if you can prepare the collard wrap beforehand and refrigerate them, steam them beforehand. I think you could. I think you could, but they're going to get softer with time, but that might be better because then they're really tender. But I think, I think you probably could. But they, you know, they steam so quickly. You can just kind of roll them, you know, just toss them over some, a steaming pot and they'll steam. I mean, you're literally just blanching them. So it's really, it doesn't take that long. Did I probably you, would do it fresh for sure. Can, I'm, I'm so lazy. I've actually, you can microwave them for about 10 seconds. That's true. You could do that too. When you're lazy. You do a lot in the microwave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see if there's any other questions. Well, people love you. They love your books. Let's see. Lisa says, I ordered a box of frozen meals for Plant Pure Nation for myself and my mom. They are arriving today. I think it'll be a great gift for my mom who has trouble cooking for herself. Would you like to talk about your frozen meals? Yeah, that, thank you for reminding me. Um, so we have frozen meals, Plant Pure, and uh, that the reason we did that is we wanted to be we wanted to be able to for people to jumpstart all across the country, and um, we were actually sort of catering food in our jumpstarts. So then we came up with a whole line of frozen food, and we have uh, uh, a company up in uh, up in Canada that sources our food and creates it and it's great. We have 20 different meals that you can order on our website, 20. And I, I don't ask me what they are because I don't know them by heart, but I know what my favorite ones are. And then we also have five, did I say this right, Nelson? We have five or are we up to eight now with the Publix? Uh, no, we're actually, uh, we have we're picking new products. So we're up to nine and maybe 12. Up to nine, maybe 12. Right now, if you were to go to Publix, 
you can get um, five different types of entrees there, which um, is really, a Publix is mostly on the East Coast, but we are looking at getting our food in lots of stores and it will be nationwide. Um, it's, it's great food, it's oil-free, um, it's whole food plant-based, it tastes great. The sodium levels are, um, most of them are one-to-one -one with close to one-to-one -one with calories. So they're very, very healthy. There's nothing like it on the market right now. And they taste fantastic. I had one yesterday for lunch and I just, it was great. So, yeah. Somebody is saying they don't have a pod near them. Can they start their own? You can, you can go to plantpurecommunities.org. And it will tell you how it te it'll tell you where the, the local pods are, so you you can look up and see if there's a pod near you, or you can start up a pod. And so you know, I started up my pod probably two or three years ago. We were really busy, and I didn't have time to do it. Um, I was really reluctant because I don't have, I've never been a, a, a huge leader, <laughs> so to to lead up a pod was was really a little bit intimidating for me. But once I did it. Uh, we have so much fun and I have a co-leader and she comes on and helps out and we get together once a month and we fill up this room with people. We've had up to 50 people in here or more. Um, it's a dish to pass. We do all sorts of things. We've been talking about, you know, getting involved in community projects and there's a lot of pods that are doing really interesting things in their communities, in their schools and um, locally. So if if you're intimidated by starting a pod, don't be. Start it small. Even if it's just three or four people, it will grow really, really fast. Um, and I think that's what we need. We need to support each other and uh, get together and, and with like-minded people. Yeah. So plantpurecommunities.org. Somebody's asking about the different varieties that you have. Do you happen to remember the names or what flavors you have? Um, I know we have Thai drunken noodles. I had that for lunch yesterday. We have a chili. Did I say it wrong? Garden sesame, Garden sesame noodle. Chana masala. Chana masala. We have a white bean chili. We have a macaroni and cheese. We have an Alfredo. Um, yeah, you go to the website and you can you can look them up there. The reason I'm hesitant is because there were so many that we developed and we used for jump starts and that we tested that um, I, I sometimes have a hard time spitting them all out. But there are there's a lot of variety in our food. Francie, oh sorry, go ahead. That's okay. They're 16 ounces, so they're big. They're filling. They're not these you know little little snippy eight ounce meals that you get when you go to the grocery store. That's not enough. I don't like small food. No, me neither. Yep. So Francie Sue says, are those reconstructed wooden pallets behind you? We had someone build those and bake them for us. And beautiful. They're, um, they're beautiful. I wish I had them in my own home. So I try to put a lot of the pantry items up that we use. I you know, need to switch them out every now and then. So we built a kitchen here um, in this building for cooking classes and it's been great for the, the online classes so on the other side of me we have a lot of cameras going on and you know it's and a pretty stuff. yeah Andrea says do you think you could steam the collard greens in an instant pot I worry they'd get too soft yeah your instant pot will get I mean I guess if you just want if you want to just turn your saute button on and start boiling some water and then just do it that way but I don't know why you wouldn't do it on the stove too so but if you're going to pressure cook them, it would probably get mushy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause even like when I've done zucchini at zero minutes, it just, it's, it's a little bit too mushy. Right. Right. The instant pot works for a lot of things, but not everything. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But this and what, for what you can't do in the instant pot, you do in the frevel. That's right. Absolutely. Right. Or your La Crusette. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much, Kim and Nelson. This has just been a wonderful demo and the recipe looks amazing. I was printing it out as we speak because it's definitely something I want to try. And I might even try it with sweet potatoes. And, and I love potatoes, don't get me wrong, but I, I love sweet potatoes too, or maybe mix them half and half. Yeah, let me know how that goes. Let me know if it, if it tastes good. I have not tried it with sweet potatoes. So that would be, that would be interesting. 
Yeah. So those of you that are watching as part of the Holistic Holiday at Home experience, thank you so much for cruising with us at home. We really appreciate you being here. And if you're watching on another platform and not involved, you can still sign up. There is a free level of the Holistic Holiday at Home with lots of wonderful videos. You can see my two ingredient pecan pie recipe and so many other lectures. So check that out as well. We'll provide a link for it. And please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. when we have two guests that will be doing a cooking demo. Carissa Vukovic, she's a nurse from Sacramento who works with Dr. Rosanne Oliveira at the UC Davis School of Integrative Medicine, and they're going to be making beans and greens. And if you have not subscribed to me on YouTube, this is Bailey saying please, because I'm only 131 away from 100,000, and I couldn't have done it without you and without great guests like Kim Campbell cooking amazing food. Thanks so much, Kim. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, everybody, and have a